So sun, yeah, greater than six to eight hours a day. Eight to 10 would be better. Sight, flat ground or sloping, your choice, assuming you have a choice, and then soil. Uh, that's the trifecta of what it takes to grow good crops, whether they're trees, vegetables, or flowers. So we're going to look a little quickly here at some of the qualitative assessment factors that can help you with assessing your soil. Um, one is to know about the texture of your soil. That is the percentage of sand, silt, and clay in your soil. As I mentioned, this is a con by lab analysis, this is considered a sandy clay loam. More on that later in terms of details. Um, so yeah, it's a sandy soil, but it has a good deal of clay in it. Uh, if you take a, when I was standing here before going on camera, nervous as I always am, I just reflexively bent down and grabbed a handful of soil. I just do that a lot comfort food, as it were. Um, so I did that, and then I got a little more nervous as time went on, and I started ribboning, just, just squeezing it, ribboning it, and made a little ribbon. And a general assessment of soil texture is if your ribbon is longer than two, three inches, you've probably got a clay, or pretty much a clay. And so here we are, maybe three and a half inches. Uh, it's a sandy clay loam here. Okay, uh, let's look at some soil that I dug out of the ground here. What are some of your principal assessment factors for soil analysis? Again, you will get a soil lab test that tells you definitively what the amounts of macro and micronutrients are in your soil, uh, your pH, uh, organic matter, and a few other important metrics. And these are things that you cannot discern visually or in a tactile sense. But there are some things you can determine in that manner. Uh, one is soil color. Basically, in a nutshell, darker is better. Darker is richer. Darker indicates a higher organic matter con uh, a content. And for every one half percent rise in organic matter, they say you get about 15, 20 percent more nutrients across the board, macro and micro. So higher organic matter content is in your favor. Um, this site here at the UCSC farm is not really a soil that is classified for agricultural production. It is land classification category, something more along the lines of suited to light grazing, maybe growing some hay. And yet we, with uh, intensive, intensive in a good manner, uh, organic uh, techniques and principally using compost and cover crops, being very careful about our tillage and practicing good crop rotations, have made it uh, such that we can have uh, flourishing crops here. But its base organic matter content has always been yeah, plus or minus 3%, not particularly high. And that's a function largely of our climate. It's uh, semi-arid. Uh, and it's uh, warm. We don't get a lot of buildup of organic matter here. Uh, three to four percent, not unusual. It is interesting to note that in the years 2020, 2021, basically the farm was fallow owing to COVID. We did not till. This spring we came out back on track and we did a set of uh, a soil tests as we do every spring and our organic matter content rose one full number from about three percent to four percent. Speaking perhaps to uh, how tillage can work against you in terms of organic matter and carbon accumulation. Now note there are some very positive things about tillage too but it's interesting to note that don't till for a year and a half and a significant rise in organic matter. So uh, this soil would be classified as brown not black but still beautiful um, and uh, again of a moderate organic matter content. Um, uh, another thing you want to look at is what would be called uh, texture is a given. Your soil is a sand is a sand, a clay is a clay. You got what you got. Can't really change texture. Don't try. But structure, that is, how are those individual particles of sand, silt, and clay in whatever proportions they're present? How do they bind together? How are they aggregated together into aggregates to form good soil structure? And uh, 
there are a bunch of forces, natural and un, that can influence aggregation in a positive fashion. One is good, wise, judicious, gentle tillage practices. Anytime you force soil particles together again gently, even on a mechanical scale, that pushing together starts the process of aggregation. The taking the individual particles of sand, silt, and clay and forming them into secondary units or a secondary architecture or geometry, if you will, uh, that is we're about to look at down here uh, on the ground. The other things that help with aggregation, particularly, so tillage can foster aggregation, but what seals the deal or cements it in a sense are exudates, root exudates and exudates from microbes. They are the glue that holds your soil together into aggregates. So let's look at this sample on the ground now and look at it in terms of aggregation. Something I could marvel at and look at well all day long. So if we look here you can see an admixture of different size particles and or more properly aggregates. Some are large some are intermediate, some are finer. And in truth, the larger aggregates are less stable than the mid-size and fine aggregates. But this is a very well aggregated soil, especially a soil that has been tilled annually for the better part of 50 years. Um, it is really a an environment that fosters both root growth and microbial life uh, and again is working in our favor and it got here by cumulative good practices. So you have soil color, you have soil structure and aggregation. What this structure or aggregation would be called would be called crumb or granular structure and I think it's a pretty apt analogy when you think of those words. Uh, my analogy I use is that loaf of whole wheat bread, you take it out of the oven, it's still hot, piping hot, cut off a slice before you slather it with butter, and that kind of pebbled marbled texture to that slice. That's where you want to be with your soil structure and aggregation. So uh, other factors uh, would be soil depth. For growing uh, fruit trees you would like at least a foot, a foot and a half of good rich open topsoil. Two feet or more would be better. And you can determine that by simply digging a pit and looking at what's called the profile. Um, and as above, so below ain't necessarily so. You may have a really dark, rich topsoil that down six, eight, ten inches turns into something, well, how shall I say it in a non-technical sense, funky. Uh, that is, it's compacted or has a good amount of clay, is maybe has a hard pan like that. So you need to look and examine at depth. A couple, even three feet would be worth the physical effort. Um, and if you have some sort of minor compaction at depth, you might want to do a little deeper tillage to offset it. Again, cover crops can aid your tillage tools in terms of uh, undoing compaction at depth, and this would be via the use of their taproot or biodrill as it is referred to. So uh, you've got soil color, you've got organic matter content, uh, and you've got uh, soil structure, and you've got soil depth. Uh, the other thing is hey, how does it smell? <laughs> Well, earthy, of course. And what's the deal with that? It's actually a metric. Uh, good smelling soil is basically off gassing of a high microbial respiration rate. It means that your cumulative efforts in your soil have created and fostered an environment that's really conducive for a wide range of microorganisms, which are really going to help you grow.